Good morning, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me. I'm T Payne, and welcome to Let's Learn C. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side to jump to any specific sections or the examples. Today we'll be using Visual Studio Community Edition, which you can download from visualstudio.com. However, you can use whatever you'd like to follow along. Make sure you have annotations turned on so you can see the updates that I make to these videos. Today's focus is on the setup of Visual Studio and setting up your first C++ program. If this is your first programming language, I'd strongly recommend checking out my Let's Learn Python series, which teaches you the fundamentals of programming. All you need are the basic series and the object-oriented programming series, linked on the right-hand side, and you'll be prepared for this C++ series. All right, so what is C++? In school, you know how you got grades like A, B, C, D, and F? Well, there's actually a secret grade, and it's called C++. And you get it when you're failing the class, but then you ace the final. You get a C++. Also, your teacher's head explodes in the confetti, and then everyone's clothes disappear. <laughs> All right, it's a terrible joke. All right, so C++ is a general purpose programming language used for just about everything. Microsoft, Autodesk, and Adobe all use C++ for their products, which means most every movie, every video game, and most every application out there has been directly or indirectly influenced by or created with C++. So that's amazing. This programming language is incredibly powerful and super widely used, so it's incredibly useful to know, and it'll make you an invaluable programmer. First, Visual Studio is free. You can download it and install from visualstudio.com. Look for the Community Edition right here. There are also a variety of other applications you can use to follow along with these tutorials like Xcode for Mac users, Sublime, Notepad++, Eclipse, and there's even editors for iPads and tablets. So you can absolutely follow along regardless of what you're using. After you install Visual Studio, click on New Project right here on the left-hand side, or you can go to File, New, and Project to open the New Project window. On the left-hand side, under this pop-up window, you'll see Installed. You twirl it down and you'll see Templates. Under that, you'll see Visual C++. Now, when you were initially installing stuff, you had a variety of options to install packages and stuff, and you may or may not have installed uh, the C++ package. So, if you did not, you should see a window like this. When you select Visual Studio C++, you merely double click on this, uh, install Visual C++ 2015 tools for Windows Desktop, and that'll install everything you need to get working with C++ in Visual Studio. It'll show you this nice little pop-up window, and then you're good. All right, so now when you select Visual Studio under this tab, on this middle part, you should see Empty Project as one of the options. Go ahead and select that. Next, you're going to punch in your first project name. I'm going to title this project 01 underscore my first program because we're in lesson 01 and this is going to be the subject matter. And it's my first program. Next, under locations, I'm going to go ahead and place it. And then after I have that location selected, I'll just go ahead and click OK. Boop. It'll take some time to set up all the files necessary. All right, so now that we have this set up, here's what Visual Studio looks like when you're working with it. On the bottom, we have the output window that's going to output when it's building files or building solutions. And then we also have this other option, this tab down below next to it that says error list. Error list is going to output any errors that we have while we're programming. On the right-hand side, we have the Solution Explorer that lists out all of our projects and all of our files. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this window over slightly so you can see it better. But I'm going to right-click on Source Files, click Add, and then Add New Item. Here, I'm going to select Visual Studio C++, or Visual C++, and then I'm going to select C++ File, and we're going to name this main.cpp. Something to note is that we're going to continually name our main file that has our main function, and it's just main. And I'll explain main in just a minute. Then click Add. By the way, if you have either of these tabs over and right here that say Server Explorer or Toolbox, all you have to do is click on them once, and then it'll collapse. 
whichever one you have open. All right, so here we have our main.cpp file open. And now we're going to begin programming C++. So now we're going to begin by typing two forward slashes to start a comment. And we're going to type, this is my first C++ program, exclamation points. Okay, press enter. And now you're going to type the pound symbol or the hashtag or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then include immediately afterwards with no space in the middle. Then we're going to add a space and then greater than sign. And then we're going to type IO stream and end it. I'm going to go ahead and explain all of this in more detail in just a bit. But let's just go ahead and finish up this code. Then we're going to type int main open close parentheses. And then we're going to type braces. Enter to space them out like so. Then we're going to type S std colon colon c out space double greater than sign double quotes for ham sandwich. You knew it was coming. And then slash n. This is a backslash n that we're typing. And finally, we're going to end this line of code with a semicolon. After that, press enter and then type return zero and end it with another semicolon. And there you go. You're done. You have created your first C++ program. That's all there is to it. We're going to go ahead and save that by clicking up here on the uh, floppy disk. You can also save by clicking on file, save main CPP, and that does the same thing. Or you can press control S, which is my favorite. And now we're going to go ahead and test our program. The way we do that is by clicking on this slightly less dark gray bar on the left hand side next to the five. And we're going to go ahead and click there and it should create this red dot. This red dot is a breakpoint. This is where when the program is in debug mode, it will stop executing code and will just tell you the status of the program, the current state of the program. It basically as, acts as a freeze frame on like a movie, or it's like the pause button in a video game. So you can see exactly where stuff is at. Next, we're going to go ahead and click on this button up top that says local windows debugger. This is how we're going to test out our code. So we're going to go ahead and click on that because we just want to test. And now you can see in the output window, stuff is going on down here. And then this pop up window for diagnostics pops up to let us know stuff's going on. And then we get this pop up black command console window pop up right here that says ham sandwich with an exclamation point. Perfect. So our program is working beautifully. The reason I set this breakpoint is to stop the program because otherwise it would just execute so fast that it wouldn't give us a chance to see what it's outputting. It would just go execute done in a split second. So that is what the red dot is doing. Now, if we click continue, this is green button at the top. It'll finish out the program and we're done. Something to note, if you do see any errors in this error list, look at that line of code to make sure that it is matching my code exactly. Also, if you have problems building or Visual Studio hangs, uh, I'd recommend shutting down Visual Studio and restarting it. All right, now it's time for a breakdown of the code. What is going on in this program? Well, we start off in line one with a simple comment. In Python, we use the uh, hashtag or pound sign um, to start a comment. Um, in C++, we use the double forward slash to initialize a comment. So everything after here is completely ignored. Then we use the hashtag or pound sign um, include to import stuff. In Python, we use the word import. Um, in C++, you use include. Include is going to tell the program what files we're going to need to run this program. In this case, it's going to be the IO stream. The IO stream um, is what allows us to input and output. So it's input output stream is what the uh, long name would be. Um, and we're surrounding that by double alligator mouths or uh, greater than and less than signs. The greater than and less than signs are used for anything that's like a uh, library file. Um, if you're using your own header files, we're going to be using double quotes like we use down here. Uh, but we'll tackle that later on. In line three, we have the declaration of the main function. So in Python, you didn't actually need to declare a return type for a function. Uh, Python would automatically figure that out for you. 
Here in C++, it's a lot more picky. Everything in C++ is super picky about data types, about what everything is. You, you've, you're basically carefully describing in excruciating detail what you're doing with the program. And so the very first thing that we have is int. And just like in Python, int is an int. Um, it's used for designating integers. Um, there's also a variety of other uh, data types that are numbers, but we'll get into that later. Then we have the name of the function that we're creating. In this case, it's the main function. The main function is called by C++ to actually execute your whole program. All of your program has to be contained within these brackets following it in some way, shape, or form. And just like in Python, we have a pair of parentheses following the name of the function to say, hey, these are going to be the arguments we're going to take in for this function. In this case, since we're just calling a very simple version of the main function, we're not taking any arguments. After that, we have braces. These braces or curly brackets surround the bulk of our code. Every function and class definition must have curly brackets surrounding it. And there are some programmers who prefer to have the curly brackets begin and end uh, like this uh, so that they can tell really clearly like that they have both. Uh, I find it's kind of a waste of space. So I prefer to have the curly brackets um, right after the class function. And this method of having the curly bracket after the function name is what's widely accepted as a standard in the C++ community. You'll see it in the C++ guidelines if you ever go into those. Um, it's just the standard way of doing it. And uh, I personally like it. it, saves on space. Line four, we have S TD, and that stands for a sexually transmitted disease. No, it doesn't. It's standard. Uh, STD stands for standard. Um, and then we have colon, colon, C out. So what's going on here? Well, the C out, if we look at that C output, so it's a C style way of outputting stuff to give feedback to the user, which is what we saw in the, if we run it again, in the console window that popped up. It's just this stuff right here. I'm going to go ahead and continue to finish out the program. So C out is just saying, hey, this is going to be my, my output. In Python, we were using print. C out is how we're going to output here. Now, this STD is standard colon colon. This is basically a uh, namespace thing. Um, we'll get into later. But basically, if you ever want to output, you're going to need this line followed by double greater than signs. The double greater than signs are actually an operator, which we'll cover later. <laughs> Again, I'm saying all this, we're covering it later, we're covering it later, <laughs> but we will be. Um, so these double alligators are an operator to basically signal that this is what I'm going to be outputting. And after that, we have in double quotes, the ham sandwich slash n. The slash n we know from Python is a new line character, and the double quotes is how we output a string. C++ is very particular in that double quotes are used for strings and single quote quotes are used for exclusively single characters. So A, B, C, single letter, um, or even like a new line character. Finally, we end the line of code with a semicolon. This is like a period at the end of a sentence. Python, you didn't have anything at the end, but this you must have every line. Um, this semicolon actually allows you to stack lines of code if you so desire. So if we wanted to, we could actually delete that extra line of line down here and move the return up following the other line. And it'd work just fine. It's unfortunately uh, not easy to read. So I would never recommend doing that. It's better just to break up your code so it stacks up nicely like this. Finally, we have return. Return is just like in Python, just going to return whatever follows it. and here we're just returning zero so that the function's output of int is satisfied. And the program is like, all right, cool, we're, uh, we have an output. And on line six, we just have a closing curly bracket to end our main function. Something interesting to note is that we have a return type of int here, and we returned zero here. If we wanted to, we could actually change this to char and then return a single character, which would be a in uh, single quotes. Um, to actually return a character. And the program would work just fine, but I wouldn't recommend it as most everybody seems to use int here. So just stick with int. It won't, uh, it'll be less confusing down the road. One final note, 
Visual Studio creates these files called SLN files. They're SLN extension files. And uh, these are the files that will actually open up your project if you were to double click on them. So if we close out this program and then just double click, it'll go ahead and open it up for us. And we're back to where we started. So in the debugging exercises that you find, this is the file you want to double click to open the program. And that's it. You are officially a C++ programmer, or at least on your way to becoming one. <laughs> um, thanks so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Definitely try these coding challenges here and also the debug challenges linked below in the description or in the annotations. You are a brilliant programmer. I'm sure you can do it if you set your mind to it. I will be posting solutions for all of these problems after a group of tutorials, probably around 10 or 11. But I really want you to develop your own skills and solutions. There's often many correct answers. Please leave me a comment below if this helped you at all. And please also check out the comments below if you're having problems. As more often than not, if you're having problems, there's somebody else who has had it before you. Lastly, please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. Hit that like button to show some love. And thank you so much for your support and keep the dream alive.